Uh, we're going to start now just so that you guys have a bit more time with Jacob, who's our developer. Um, I'm going to run through a little bit about the company. Can you guys hear me all right? Yeah. Like, with the microphone, this is okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'll just run through uh, what Pumatayo is, what we do, how we're involved, um, you know, with the AAC community. And then Jacob will go into a demo of our creator tool, uh, which is our introductory tool for augmented reality. Um, it's something that, regardless of whether or not you know how to code, you can use it today if you want it to um, in, in whatever application you're building. So I think I'm start. If you guys have any questions, feel free to interrupt at any time. It makes sense. Um, so who's Matayo? Matayo, uh, a lot of people haven't heard of us, but we have been around for about 10 years, uh, a little over. We have offices in Munich, Dallas, and San Francisco. Um, over the years, we've worked with brands in all different verticals, doing augmented reality experiences. Uh, some of our most famous ones are probably Lego and Ikea. If you've ever been into a Lego toy store anywhere in the world, um, you can walk in. They have the Lego digital box. You can hold up anything off the shelf in front of that box, and you'll see built in 3D and animated uh, what that model will look like once it's fully built. Uh, we have a little over 100 employees and over 100 patents all over the world. Um, currently, we're at about 90,000 users uh, and developers on our platform. And uh, in total, uh, if you count every individual object that can be augmented, we have about a billion um, throughout the world that can be opened within our different applications and within Genio, which is our augmented reality browser. Um, for those of you who are interested, um, this is just a quick slide showing the different patents that we have currently. Um, and the ones that are pending um, isn't fully updated. This year alone, I think we registered about another 50 patents. Um, so we have one of the largest augmented reality portfolios out there. Okay, so what is augmented reality? Um, who here has heard of augmented reality or interacted with it? We have a few people who haven't. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, very simply put, augmented reality is meshing of the digital world with the real world. Um, we have virtual reality, which is creating a purely virtual world. Augmented reality takes digital information and overlays it in the real world. Um, one of the longest lasting examples so far is if you watch basically any sport, um, like the first down line in football is, in a sense, augmented reality. Um, basically, whenever you watch TV and you see these lines being drawn, showing different plays, that's augmented reality. So, Augmented reality started out with very basic stuff. Um, when you were doing tracking, you used something that looked like this, or a QR code or a barcode. Um, wasn't very aesthetically pleasing. A lot of the initial projects were done for marketing purposes. Um, but what it's become now is much more advanced. Uh, something that most people have probably heard of are the different wearable devices that are coming out this year. I'm sure most, if not all, of you have heard of Google Glass. Um, in addition to that, you know, there's Mavero BT100, Musix M100, these are all coming out this year, they're hitting consumer markets, um, and a lot of people are seeing that this, this is one of the futures of augmented reality. Um, in addition to that, we're moving from 2D tracking to 3D tracking. And so before, when we're using an image like this for, you know, a flat picture, uh, what we're moving into now is being able to look at a computer and being able to realize that what unit that is without having any type of marker image on it. So what does AR have to do with AEC? Um, it's a lot harder to explain, so what I'm going to do is walk you through a few videos that are showing examples of what we can do. Um, so the first one I'm going to show is uh, SAP created a event reality experience. Um, it's a prototype, but we like to show it because most, if not all, of this stuff. Sorry, my computer's getting a little crazy. Um, is actually feasible, and you can imagine and see a lot of the concepts um, that they come up is for warehouse planning.
So as we're walking through this video, um, they're doing a they're wearing a prototype of the V6, uh, that old soon come out. Um, and right now, on this display, it's giving navigational direction throughout the warehouse. Um, so this is something that we can do right now. Um, it's much more accurate on a larger scale. So, but inside a warehouse, um, there are several ways to go about this that I can go into later. Um, barcode scanning and QR code scanning that's always been an inherent part, part of authentic reality. Um, so that's something very simple to do. So while that's simply uh, a concept video, we actually have built um, at least part of the solution. So the part where he saw that there was a malfunctioning um, part to their car, um, he then was able to dial in and get someone to help, and there was some augmented reality showing him how to fix it. Um, we've built a solution for that uh, for Mitsubishi. Um, but walking through this, Mitsubishi has worked with us for a while. When they first started out, they wanted a sales tool. Um, Mitsubishi Electric has a lot of different air conditioning machines. And what they were doing is their salespeople were going to different homes and showing these in a thousand page catalog. Um, they're saying, you know, these units are more environmentally friendly and they're a lot cheaper than having a ducted system. But in the end, people just wanted to see what those units look like inside the actual setting. Um, but it's really hard to carry around these giant machines, so we created a augmented reality solution for them. Um, and now what they have is a very simple post-it note that has their logo on it. They can now place this anywhere inside the, their clients' homes, and they can visualize life-size and 3D what these units would look like. They estimated that if every salesperson had this tool and they were able to sell one additional unit, 
they would make an additional $30 million for that year. Um, last year at Inside AR, in October, they actually gave us the number and they made $60 million. Um, just being able to visualize this unit, they, it, it, it helped their sales team. Um, it was so successful, they wanted to see what else they could do with this. Um, so they decided to bring it internally to the company. And what they did here was every person that they hire um, that has to do maintenance on the machines, they have to go through a training process. They get a manual that basically has some of the like first 17 units that they have to work on. Um, they gave that to us and told us, you know, make this, make this a better manual. Um, show us how we can use this and present it in a better way. So what we did um, initially was build an iPad app that did that used augmented reality and 3D tracking to walk through the steps on how to fix this, um, how to perform maintenance on these units. Um, but holding an iPad up while you're doing maintenance isn't really, you know, something that is practical. So what we ended up doing was porting it to the Mavario BT200, uh, which is what you'll see in this video here. Glasses are actually going to be sold by Epson. I think it hit the uh, consumer market in the US at the end of this month. What it's doing now, you just saw a very simple edge uh, model. We got that from the CAD model and just simplified it down. And the left side of this is the view that the person wearing the glasses sees. The handheld device is it's not a voice commanded. Um, so it's just a trackpad that allows you to go and flip through the different steps. So that is actually that Mitsubishi has something that Mitsubishi has implemented right now uh, within their company and they are using. So the next video I'm going to show you, uh, we did a, we've done a few projects with Bechtel um, and for much larger projects with uh, construction site planning and other things in that area, um, we actually have uh, completely, in a sense, out of the box solutions for engineering um, and construction sites and architects. So.
changes in the brain cells are new. The tyrannic here is replacing all former methods of using laser scanning and tumor. So this step of the actual state comparison can be received more scientifically due to the potentiality of the tyrannic. Those are just some of the examples um, of things we've been able to do for, for different uh, companies. Um, but what Jacob is going to present today is the different things that you can use in the hackathon um, that will help you build some of these solutions that we've been able to show you. Um, the first thing, uh, well, one of the things that you can use is the Tayo SDK. Um, it is a free SDK, so you can go ahead and download that and use this. Um, if you have any experience developing mobile applications on iOS or Android, use native code in order to build these experiences. We also have a language called ARL, Augmented Reality Experience Language. It's based on JavaScript and HTML5, making it a lot simpler um, for people to break in and use it. And uh, this SDK, um, the free SDK also allows you to do some of the 3D tracking that you're able to see. Um, 3D tracking, you can do that with point clouds, uh, which Jacob will show you how to create on the spot in a bit, um, in addition to using CAD models that you might already have on file. Um, you'll also demonstrate the creator, which is our introductory tool that can be done with or without coding. Um, and Jacob will walk you through that in a bit more detail in a bit. Uh, as I announced yesterday, we are having a category for AR solution. And uh, what we're looking for, of course, is something new. We're, not, we're looking for something that's not um, you know, simply based on the 2D tracking anymore, um, trying to implement this 3D tracking. Um, and having AR as an integral part of the uh, solution rather than it being, you know, an additional side feature. Um, we're okay with using it in any of the verticals. Uh, we just want you to present, in a sense, a solution um, to any problem and can see AR as a visualization tool being a safety tool. Um, the prizes, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, so first place you would get a one-year cloud subscription. Uh, it's worth about $3,300. This allows you to build an unlimited number of apps. Uh, any app that you produce for any commercial reason, we don't take any royalties for it. Um, and this will basically allow you to create as many as you want, um, whether it's for commercial use or not. And if you impress us enough, um, you have the chance to fly out to Inside AR in Munich. Um, happens every year in October, uh, right around Oktoberfest. And it's the largest augmented reality <coughs> expo in the world. Um, we'll have some of the major uh, brands that you saw there um, that I presented before, they'll be there, um, and you'll have a speaking platform. Um, second and third place, we will give you a uh, copy of our, our creator, uh, which is the tool that Jacob will now demonstrate. Um, another thing we're hiring, if you're interested, <laughs> um, in actually all of our offices, um, in development, marketing, and sales. Uh, so you can just go onto our website and look um, if you're interested. <laughs> um, uh, if you have any uh, any questions, um, I have my business cards up here, but you're welcome to send me a quick email if you want to see these videos or any additional ones. We actually have a whole portfolio of different aspects of um, our engineering solution. And, uh, Jacob will now come up and we'll introduce to you our creator tool. So, uh, what I'm going to be talking about today is the uh, Mentayo Creator. It's uh, free to download and to publish on, um, although you're limited to just a couple of different uh, markers and models in the beginning. Basically, what it is, is it's a drag and drop interface for augmented reality. So, you can select a, um, either a 3D point cloud or an image, and uh, you select a model, and they're basically instantly associated. Uh, you can have an augmented reality experience up and off of the ground in like two to five minutes. It's really easy to use, and it's a great way of uh, quickly prototyping. AR experiences. Uh, in addition to that, it also has uh, integrated scripting. 
So once you have your, uh, your simple augmented reality scene in place, it's really easy to expand upon that and add logic and uh, really make it a lot more complex. So um, I think that um, we have a wide range of projects. Uh, I chose to uh, bring this to you guys today because I feel like it's the easiest to use. And so even if you have no background in augmented reality or you're not a uh, developer you know, uh, full time, you can easily download this product and have an experience within five minutes. That's really quite easy. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna give you a quick walkthrough. So as you can see here, we've got these uh, three buttons down at the bottom. The uh, one on the left brings you to a UI designer where you can simply uh, select a button for um, an image. This will be placed uh, on top of the screen. Uh, this here is uh, our instant tracker, which means that uh, with this feature selected, you don't even need a marker. You simply place a model in here, and then when the user launches their phone, they take a photo of what they're looking at, and the model will be placed on top of their environment, basically. Um, this third one, though, is what we're gonna be using here. This little plus icon will let us select the uh, type of tracking that we wanna use. Uh, you can see here we've got image tracking and object tracking. Object tracking would be if you wanted to, uh, to uh, make a model, if you had, for example, a scale model of a city, and you wanted to be placing uh, 3D houses, perhaps, in that. Or you had um, a scale model of maybe a, a bridge, and you wanted to be showing uh, stress points, you know, in augmented reality on top of that bridge. Uh, for this demo, though, I'm just going to go with the uh, image tracking. And we're going to select um, Amanda's business card here. And as you can see, it puts a, um, a simple image right here on uh, the ground that we can scroll around and look at. Um, and I have a little uh, interior model of a house prepared. I think it's the uh, living room. So we're simply going to open this. So now you can see that we have this um, model of the house <coughs> sitting on top of her uh, business card right here. Right? Um, pretty simple, obviously. But the neat thing is if we hit start, uh, it'll bring up a little uh, video preview using the uh, built-in webcam. See? And that's how easy it is to make augmented reality. <laughs> I mean, this is literally, you, if you have your uh, 3D models prepared, um, you simply select an image and you have augmented reality that can be deployed to your device within 10 minutes. So we're going to uh, close this. Cool. So that's, I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, that's the demo, right? I mean, that's how easy it is. Um, I'm going to uh, show you guys a little bit more functionality here. Um, so I'm going to show you a little bit of the uh, scripting. Okay. So if we had a, um, we're going to select a button here, right? We're just going to add this uh, image, which is uh, <coughs> basically like a, a figure of root, right, on top of the model. So um, this example is maybe uh, perhaps you have a uh, uh, scale model of uh, in, an industrial building, right, like a, an apartment complex, for example, uh, and this. This model here could actually be placed basically inside of the building. Um, and then when the user looks at it, you could have them touch the apartment to turn the walls transparent so that they'd be able to see onto the, into the interior through scale model buildings, right? Which would be really cool because then it's like poking holes in the walls or taking the roofs off of the houses. Um, so in order to do that, we simply uh, right click here. We're gonna go down to properties and we're gonna select this edit uh, custom RL script. Screen. Okay, cool. So as you can see, it's got um, it's in JavaScript. Uh, it's really simple. Here it's the uh, name of the object that we have selected here on the left, and it's on touch started. I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm not sure how big this is, um, but it's really self-explanatory. So whenever the button is clicked, whatever you type in here is going to happen. Um, other things, for example, are on the visible. 
Uh, in this case, when the marker is tracked and the object becomes visible, that's when this would trigger. So if you did, if you had a, an animation, perhaps, of, um, let's just say we, we go back to that bridge analogy. You have an animation of wind blowing against it and you want to show the stress points, but you don't want that uh, animation to begin until the user is actually looking at it. You would put that in the on visible. But so for now, we're going to go up to the uh, on touch started, and we're gonna, this is going to be really simple. We're just going to say button one. And then we're going to say set visible. Sorry, I don't actually have this on my screen. I'm looking at this little tiny one up here. So. <laughs> and then we're going to say um, false. So what this means is we've now added a very simple script to uh, our root here, right? So that when we first begin tracking, all we're going to see is the root and the outside of the building. Uh, however, when we touch it or when we tap on it, the root will disappear. Um, and as you can see, obviously, this is very simple logic, but it can be really quickly um, expanded upon to add a lot more uh, functionality. This back over. You don't happen to have a video playing in the background. Um, Just if it's not you, I can. No, I don't sure. think so. So I closed okay. all of the. Uh, uh, I think it's it me. Yeah, yeah, it is. You can see it. It's it's the background of the creator screen. Uh, so you can just. So now, when uh, we track this marker, um, this would be, for example, again, imagine you're looking down at a scale model. This is an a image of a house, and uh, this is running on an iPad. And if the user ta uh, taps the root, it disappears, and then they're able to see into the building. So that's um, how you implement the uh, scripting. And basically, any of the objects in your scene can uh, you can attach scripting to. So what this means is that the creator is really easy to use. Um, if you don't have any programming skills, you can simply place models and markers. And um, basically, it, it scales really well. If you're an intermediate programmer, you can do quite a lot of different things with it. If you're a skilled programmer, you can make entire augmented reality experiences that are world class using uh, this tool. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show, which I think, um, if I don't know if any of you here are planning on using augmented reality in your projects, but um, this feature is um, not particularly uh, well known, but it's incredibly powerful, so I just want to bring it to your attention. Um, does anyone here know what like an occlusion model would be? Okay, all right, cool. So basically the, the theory behind this is imagine if we have a little scale model of, uh, of a city, okay, with a couple of different buildings, and, you want, and you've got a, a vacant lot. And so what you want to do is you want to augment um, a, a building into the city. Maybe several different ones. You want to see which building you like in this city the best. Um, the problem right now is that the uh, augmented reality content is always placed on top of the video feed. Okay, so that means if you have a high rise like this, and you have your little house here, when it goes to the other side of the house, it'll still appear on top of it. So it, it, you get this weird floaty effect where it basically will clip through um, objects that is, should be behind them. Uh, so the trick to um, getting around this is we're actually going to bring in a little um, city here. I'll give you an example. Scale this up. There you go. So if this is our um, the little scale model that we've been talking about, right? Um, and 
this building that we were working with earlier is the um, So uh, we're going to place this in the uh, in the middle of the road. Bring it over here, build up a little bit, and we're going to scale it down. Again, I'm assuming that everybody here is familiar with uh, basic 3D manipulation tools such as scale and field shape. It's pretty simple. So um, so here, if we have this uh, model, basically in the middle of the the uh, the real city, and it goes on the other side of the building, we would want it to disappear. So what we do here is we simply select the, uh, the augmented city, and we go down to properties, and we um, use it as occlusion geometry. And this means that when you're actually running the augmented reality experience, you won't see any of the gray things. But what it'll do is it'll cut a hole through anything that passes behind it. And that means that if you have, um, for example, again, if you have a model of this desktop, and you have uh, an object that passes behind your occlusion geometry, it will actually appear cut off as opposed to floating on top of everything else. So, um, again, as you can see here, so as we're rotating around, it will only be visible basically when it should be visible. Um, uh, there's a lot of other functionalities uh, in here. Uh, two of the ones that I want to talk about are um, here, you can link to another Junio experience, which means that you can queue up uh, multiple options. You can have much more complex experiences by basically linking them together. Uh, and the other one down here is uh, also interesting, I think, for you guys. It's a uh, panorama experience. So for example, what you could do is um, imagine this is your scale model. You have your little building here. You can simply place a button in your scene. Uh, we're just going to use the rooftop because that's uh, you could link your um, button to a different channel, and that other channel could be a panorama experience. So you're looking at the scale model. You have your uh, augmented reality uh, house. If you touch that house, what you could do is you could have it open up a panorama of the interior of the house. So then users can look around and see what the what it actually looks like from the inside. So I'm just going to show you that real quick. So I think the uh, default here is um, let's scale this up just so you guys mm -hmm. can see it. I think it's a it's an exterior view, but it'll give you a good idea basically of what you're looking at. And so if we load this channel on our iPad or whatever, it'll basically be placed in the middle of this uh, giant <coughs> sphere. Sorry, the uh, trackpad here isn't very responsive. There you go. So you'd be basically be placed in the middle of this giant sphere. And as you move the iPad around, again, I mean, you, most of you have probably used a panorama application before. It's pretty simple. Uh, however, our um, stabilizers, especially on iOS, are really crisp. And so when you're moving it around, it's just like you're actually looking through a camera in a different room, basically. Um, in addition to that, um, there's a lot of other content you can add here. For example, you can have um, a YouTube video or a uh, embedded video locked onto your page and playing, uh, which you can use occlusion too. Which you can do some really neat tricks with that. Probably not what you guys in the architecture um, industry are looking for, but um, there are some really neat tips and tricks you can do there. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to show you guys is the um, No, I, I was actually going to show you the 3D map, but I don't think I have it on um, this computer. So the last thing that I'm going to show you is actually, so once you've basically created this experience, um, what do you do with it, right? Uh, there's three different ways. You can either uh, create a develop, developer account with us and uh, post it, and then download our application, and you'll be able to see it within a couple of minutes. However, if you want to have a, a standalone app, you can simply go up here to uh, Publish and uh, select either cloud app or SDK app. The cloud app means that all of the content will be hosted online, and 
accessed through the user's Wi-Fi or data. Uh, and an SDK app means that all the uh, 3D models and sound and videos and content can actually be hosted on the device. Um, if you select that, you simply hit, uh, you know, you go to the next page, and then you're either able to export an Eclipse project or um, a iOS Xcode project. From there, anybody who has iOS or uh, Android development skills can uh, tie it up and create their own application. Basically. Um, and again, the uh, export here takes a couple of minutes. So, um, you know, the whole thing is really simple. Like, I really don't have that much more to talk about. Um, are there any uh, questions or anything like that? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm blown away. It's fabulous uh, what you guys have put together. <laughs> but, but that being said, one other um, I guess a, a little deeper level of application might be, and maybe I missed something where uh, I can penetrate, you know, a building model, basically like, like almost creating a walkthrough. Mm -hmm. Is that capability exist in within your support package? So you're talking about kind of like a full virtual reality thing where you're like, it's as if you're on the interior and you can walk kind of through the yeah. different levels? I mean, because that would be the natural progression in terms of using this as a tool to uh, with, with clients and so forth. You know, you put it on that, like you said, set it on the site, but then also let them be able to, or an interior designer or whatever, you can utilize it something like this to. Yeah, you know. sure. So um, there's a couple of different things that I can think of there. Uh, one of the ways of kind of having that walkthrough experience, we actually worked with uh, Cessna, and they were selling their private jets, and they wanted to have uh, basically it so that you could see it all along. So you could be in the cabin, or you could be in the rear, or you could be in the middle. And what we did was we queued up several uh, panorama uh, experiences, and then we made it like Google Maps, basically where you could move from one panorama to the next by pressing forward or backwards, and then you could move around basically the building, seeing it like all over. So it's basically creating Google Maps for the interior of a plane. So you could do the same thing for a house, and you'd simply need several different panorama sites to set up, and then you're using that channel link that I was talking about, you would link them to each other based on the button that you press. So, yeah. Uh, any other questions? Can it do indoor tracking? Uh, interior tracking? Yeah, um, so the you wouldn't be using GPS if you were uh, indoors. Uh, you'd probably be using a uh, 3D map tool, which um, if you're curious, again, I don't have it prepared right now, but I'd be happy to show anybody who's interested in the 3D map um, afterwards. Uh, what that does basically is you have to predefine what you're looking at. So you need to go there um, beforehand, and you need to have an iPad, and you basically teach it the environment. And then afterwards, it's just like the image tracking, where right now we're just adding the image, Instead, you would say, hey, use this 3D model that I've created, and this is what you're going to be placing the objects in your own environment. So. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Is it uh, possible um, integration with other software um, to make an image and make it easier to communicate to the viewer? Perfect. I'm glad you asked. So um, the reason I chose to um, demonstrate the creator is because it's the most um, accessible. However, we do have a Unity 3D plugin, too, actually, which, um, so if you're experienced with Unity 3D, it's basically this, except instead of, um, so basically you select your marker and you, ha you add your own custom camera, but then other than that, you have full Unity control. So you have game objects, you have um, all of your scripting available, you have lights, particle effects, uh, much more comprehensive actually. Um, I'm a Unity 3D developer to augmented reality. This is just something that I, I can demo, so definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Is there any way to get rid of the reference points? Like let's say you have to have images, is there any way to find an alternative to, for the image as a you know, reference point. Let's say, for example, you have a beam model, you go inside, you have this virtual reality, whatever you call it, model, mm -hmm. can you make it so automatic thing so that when the camera sees the environment, picks up the, the reference points by itself, like, so that you don't have to take a you know, so you don't more code or something? Uh, so you're saying to, I'm, I'm not quite sure of your question, can you expand a little bit more? I mean, so you have to have a reference point here, right? Mm -hmm. You have to have an image or something so that it fits the uh, yeah. virtual reality thing. And but you, you want to make it um, so that you could fit it on anything? Mark yes. Goes. Yeah, sure, so with that actually, so that's what, um, earlier I, uh, I mentioned it. Uh, I'll give you guys a quick example. So this instant tracking here is exactly what you're talking about. So if you say, for example, I want people to be able to show the um, city, on whatever they happen to have around them. Uh, you would select the instant tracking here. You would load the city, and they would get this camera button and this close icon on their uh, screen. So right here we have the city. Uh, 
gets a little bit larger. And I'll give you a quick uh, demonstration here. So with this, um, you want people to be able to see your augmented reality city. Uh, however, you don't know if they're going to have the um, marker available to them. So you select this option, and then you simply tell them to hold something in front of the camera. And they take a photo of it, and then it augments it on top of that. You see? And so this wasn't pre-programmed. This was a user chose something with the augmentation on top of it. So, uh, Can you automate that, though? Uh, how so? So that you wouldn't have to click a button? Um, oh yeah, well there's a couple of different options because you can do on the fly 3D tracking too, which um, means that basically the user says when they're ready to see the experience and then they simply move the camera a little bit and that basically teaches it the entire environment and drops the model right in the middle of that. The problem with that is that um, like it works well and it's really powerful, but if you want to see something like uh, that city, for example, if I just did that right now, it would just kind of drop the city in the middle of the whole room. And you don't know, like you have no control over how people are going to be viewing it, right? Like there's going to be people walking behind it. Um, and so the advantages of putting it on top of a marker are you're kind of able to uh, force people to view it from a certain uh, perspective. Yeah, so. um, yeah in the back. That's really interesting. Um, so I'm going to take this in two parts. Adding multiple markers is actually really easy in uh, the creator. So right now, if we add uh, image tracking, right, and we select the uh, business card, you see the plus button has just moved over, and we can add multiple markers. Each can have its own augmented reality content associated with it. Um, we generally recommend staying around 10 for mobile devices, because after that, then you're going to start running into some latency issues. Um, what you're talking about is a little bit more complex, like knowing how the markers are basically interrelated to each other. Uh, for that, I'd probably recommend using our SDK because it's a lot more uh, powerful. As you can see here, the scripting, um, you could do that with scripting, but you'd be basically working through like a very small tunnel because it's you're just working with JavaScript and you're only able to relate directly to the objects. So um, our SDK would probably be the way to do that. But that's a very good question. Well, I, I have a loaded question. automated way to do it right now, unfortunately, because when we've had to do something similar, again, it's basically going into the XML or going into the um, getting the tracking value data and actually lining up everything up manually, basically. So, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a good one. What about dynamic data? If I wanted to have a building or a room and I wanted to put textual information, like maybe temperatures or maybe or something like that, and have it update dynamically with not just static text, is that possible? Yeah, absolutely. So um, what I would recommend doing is um, uh, you can um, host this online, okay? Uh, and when you uh, host it online, it all comes out as um, JavaScript, PHP, and HTML, right? Um, so what I would do is I would set up basically most of my scene, and then I would actually handle the logic on the uh, server side. So for example, you might, um, you're able to control basically all the different aspects of your um, scenario through the code. So if you host this on your own server, you could have, let's just say, four different uh, cubes, okay? And you could say the x value, the height of each of the cubes, relates to a value in this database. And then whenever that database changes, that cube will be updated accordingly. And so if you wanted to have um, a music visualizer, right, or a, a style thing where you've got like 10 or 15 different cubes, each synced to a different audio track and linked to a database, and then having somebody speak into the microphone and having those like, you know, that'd be completely doable, but it wouldn't, you'd be using the creator as a launching point, but you'd probably need to wrap things up by hosting it and modifying it. Cool. Anything else? All right. Well, um, I guess.
guess that's it. Um, I'll be up here for the next uh, 10 minutes or so if you have any questions. Um, I have a, if anyone is planning on working with augmented reality here at the uh, expo, um, I'd be happy to help if you have if you run into any difficulties or anything. Come up and get a business card. I'll be checking my email intermittently, um, but I will be around if you need uh, help getting set up or getting started or if you're going to run into any difficulties. Thank you.